Well, not such a great day for me, sitting below my max loss. The shirt's coming off. I'm disappointed. First day of November, max loss. Come on! Ugh, that's the worst. But you know what? It happens. And we'll break it down here. And I'm doing my recap early today because I have to walk away. I'm below max loss. I cannot take any more trades. My account is locked out. I can't, literally, cannot take more trades. So if I just sit here and I happen to see something make a huge move, all I'm going to feel is FOMO, frustration. And there's no reason to amp myself up with that unnecessary emotion. So max loss, walk away. That's the right thing to do. So let's jump onto the charts and start breaking it down. All right, where did things go off the rails today? Well, um, PRSO was the last stock I traded, but let's look at the first one. And you can see clearly, I mean, big move up all the way back down. In fact, it's red on the day right now. So it went from green on the day to red on the day. Uh, the first stock I trade was COCH. Now this one, even more dramatic, a huge spike from $3 to $9, all the way back to three. Wow. I had news at 8 a.m. Receives FDA approval to initiate pivotal clinical trial or clinical study for breakthrough hearing device. And even in spite of that news headline, it did pop up, but it came all the way back down. So we got to try to figure out why that happened. Now, this morning when I first sat down, the leading gapper was TOVX. TOVX, this one was up about 40%, 50%. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, this is a move that started after hours. Right, so the move started here yesterday, goes up a little higher, pre-market pops, drops, and it did pull away right at 7 a.m. Look at that spike of volume. I didn't jump in that because I sort of looked at it and I thought, well, it's really too cheap. It's not something I can really trust. How much is it really going to go up? Now, yeah, it broke through that pivot right there and it went through the pre-market high right here and it went a little higher. So it went from about, you know, 215-ish to 240, which isn't bad. I mean, that's not bad but I didn't take any trades on that. I just thought it would be too thickly traded and not worth it. So that was TOVX, um, GSAT, 741 million share float. That was on the scanners today, no trades on that. VSME, this one was another one that started the move after hours and I figured not worth it. So that was the right call on that one, no trades there. And really sitting down this morning at 7 a.m., there was nothing on the scans that looked good. So that left me, Pretty much with the same game plan um, as yesterday and that I've had, um, which was waiting for something with breaking news and then jumping on that momentum. And of course, through the month of October, that has been a very successful strategy. Today is isolated from that, but uh, and and worth paying attention to. But it's been a really, um, uh, you know, really good technique jumping on things with breaking news. So CO uh, CH ends up hitting the scanners at 8 a.m. And when it first hits the scanners, this one on fairly light volume starts spiking. Now, by the time I pulled it up, it took me a second to pull it up, right? You know, I got to type it in my scanner, everything else, type it in my level two window. So it already gone from three to 350 all the way up to four. So I took my first entry of a thousand shares at 444. And then I added at 489 and at five. Now this ends up going from five up to 520, up to six, up to 650, up to seven, all the way up to a high of 899. Now what I did on this was I added uh, at five, I then added at 625, I added at 650, and I added more. Uh, I actually added a thousand shares of this at $8.94. That's pretty crazy high. Uh, you know what? I added high, it was a thousand shares. I added high because, well, this thing was squeezing. I thought next stop, $10. Uh, but I stopped out as it came back down and I stopped out uh, for a loss naturally. So I ended up losing on it. And, you know, unfortunately this thing spiked all the way up to nine and then just came all the way back down. And it, it really was like unrelenting. It was two, four, six red candles in a row. Finally it bounces for a second and then it goes down even further. And I mean, this just totally like unwound the whole move, which is kind of surprising. And so I was trying to figure out like, all right, that was, you know, look, I mean, this was an aggressive trade to, you know, adding into this spike and adding high. Having said that, when we look back at some of the stocks that have given us really clean moves, 
uh, this month, we've seen a number of stocks that have done basically this type of thing where they go from three to six to nine to 10, and they've been topping out between 17 and $25 a share. So it wasn't unrealistic to think if this got over 10, we're looking at a move up to 15, 16, 17. But something about this was a little different. There was a lot of selling. Now, what I did notice on this was I looked into their filings and they just filed a, a shelf registration to sell up to $75 million of stock. They just filed it like three weeks ago. So now I'm thinking, all right, I mean, you know, a lot of small cap stocks have shelf registrations. So if you said, I'm never going to trade a small cap stock that has a shelf registration, you're going to preclude yourself from trading pretty much every small cap stock. So, you know, just because something has a shelf doesn't mean it's going to be selling on day one. But this one was selling hard on day one. So, you know, we look at the latest um, quarterly earnings statement, you know, and I see th that um, the float also I'll observe on this is a little higher, 6 million shares. I mean, look, drug, which went up 2000% was 4 million shares. So 6 million shares is still a very low float. But, you know, in this case, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not as low as some of the others. Looking at their um, quarterly earnings statement, um, total assets, uh, their cash is declining from um, the end of the year. So it's like, all right, cash is declining. Uh, it looks like liabilities are going up. Their earnings, um, total operating loss is substantial. So, you know, this is a company that clearly is in need of raising capital. It's, it's very clear to me. Now, it's not untrue of a lot of biotech stocks and, you know, these stocks are working on these different therapeutic devices and things like that. So, you know, look, I mean, this is kind of the risk of trading this sector. And, you know, on balance, when I look at the risk versus the reward, I'm clearly ahead of the game uh, in capturing the reward. But there's no doubt that this one was pretty nasty. So, you know, I was I was in profit uh, on it unrealized. And I kind of, you know, sized up for what I thought might be a bigger move. You know, I, I stepped up to the plate a little bit and I got stopped out. So took my loss on COCH. Uh, and then I did try to take another trade for a bounce off of three down here. Uh, and I lost again on that trade, even though I had the right idea, sort of. It really didn't bounce in a meaningful way. As you can see, it's basically flatlined right back at three. So I, I almost feel like, that why, but why didn't it go lower than three, right? Why didn't it go down to 250 or to, or to two? And to me, this is where I kind of feel like there's, you know, we, you know we'll find out down the road if we, if we see a headline of, you know, a secondary offering and, you know, this and that. But sometimes what we'll see is that um, anytime the stock is above a certain price, they're just unrelenting selling, but it doesn't go you know, lower than a certain level. And that to me is like a, a strategy that some of these institutional uh, traders may use who are selling shares for the company that, you know, anything they can sell for anything above, you know, $3, but don't don't push it down because we don't want the stock to plummet. So don't sell down to a dollar a share, for instance. So when you're down at three, you know, the selling kind of stops. So basically you had a, a spike here, of course, on the news, and then right into that selling, selling, selling. So when we talk about how these big moves happen, they're an imbalance between supply and demand. But on this one, all of a sudden, basically an, um, immediately upon breaking news, there was a surplus of supply that came on the market. And that supply pushed the price right back down to where it came from. So interesting for sure. All right, so down $6,000 on the day on COCH. And some of you will say, well, Ross, that's already below your max loss of five grand. Now I have my max loss set, hard max loss is at 7,500. So yes, it's true that $5,000 is my max loss. It's also true that I've been averaging over $10,000 a day for the last 30 days. So being down 6,000 at eight, eight, whatever this was, 815, 820, I'm kind of like, all right, well, you know, I let's give it a little bit of space and see what happens. But I know if I'm, I go below 7,500 that I'm actually locked out of my account and I cannot take any more trades. So that, which is the current case right now. So, so I'm now it's, you know, 815, 820, whatever. And I'm thinking, all right, well, let's see if anything else pops up. Now, naturally, this is going to put a little damper on momentum today. And I was aware of that. And so what I was thinking was, you know, we, I probably need something 
um, something that's going to have news and maybe can curl. And so I was thinking back on um, THAR from uh, earlier in the week. And if you recall this stock, this one initially popped up. Uh, actually, no, I'm thinking of, I'm not thinking of this one. I'm thinking of a different one. Let me just check my calendar. Hang on. So we had a stock that popped up and initially retraced the move and then rallied. Was it Lucy? No, I don't think it was Lucy either, but we'll just check. Lucy just popped up as well. Yeah, well, uh, I guess we could look at AMIX. This one, this one did this, but it's not the one I was thinking of, but it's fine. We can look at it anyways. So AMIX, you know, initially pops here. And I kind of thought, well, maybe today I should just be avoiding the initial pop, let it pop, whatever happens, and then take that next leg up, which is the curl. And so that's what I was kind of thinking is I'd wait for the curl. And when PRSO uh, popped up, when we had a couple other stocks, by the way, that popped up and I was like, no, nah, it's not worth it. I'm, I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, but PRSO pops up and all of a sudden this one goes from 220 and I pulled up the level two and it was at 240 right here. This is when it hit my scanner. And I was like, mm, should I buy a 240? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't see any news on it. So I say no. So it goes to 240, to 275, to 280, to three. And I was like, gosh, darn it. So I said, you know what? I'll take a starter here at three. So I took a starter at three and it rips up to th 350. And I'm like, sweet. Okay, awesome. And then literally comes all the way back down to 290. And the next candle is at 270. And I didn't take the profit off the table. And so now I'm in at three. And here's the thing, at that, mo at that moment, my PNL, see right here, it says only closing orders. So I'm down more than 7,500. So I can't. So now what I know is if I close this trade and it rips right back up, I can't get back in because I'll be below 7,500. So I said, you know what? I'm going to hold it for a second. And the only reason I did that was because I knew that if I cut my loss, I was done for the day officially, locked out. And so I said, I'll just, I'll just hold it. So instead of cutting the loss right here down 10 cents a share, which with 5,000 shares would have put me down 7,500, I held it. And it drops all the way to 40 and I'm still holding. It comes back up and I'm thinking, well, let's see if we get first candle to make a new high here back up over 85. And then, you know, my average is three, so I could add to it and we'll see what it does. And then it comes back down here and I stopped out. So I ended up losing like 70 cents a share on 5,000 shares, which is a much bigger cents per share loss than I typically would take. Uh, and, you know, it was just because I kind of got a little like, well, if I cut the loss, I'm done for the day. I don't want to be done for the day. If this does end up working, that was such a big move. Maybe this one does curl. And so anyways, now I'm down 9,400. So I am locked out of my account. I can't take any more trades today. And I gave back what I made yesterday. Yesterday was a $10,000 green day. So I gave that back today. You know, I, I was up uh, 99,000 on the week coming into today. So this gives back 10% 10, 10 of that. Um, it is the first day of November. So now I'm down 10,000 on the month of November, which is kind of a drag. Uh, and in fact, it might be the biggest, um, you know, the, the deepest red I've gone on a month so far this year, just because it, it just happens that you know, this is a, a larger red day. I mean, $10,000 is not a small red day for me. If we look at my um, at my calendar, my my red days, you know, this is kind of the, the max of how much I will typically lose on a red day, around $10,000. Uh, so this last one was $3,500. This one was $7,500. This one was $11,000, right? So I'm kind of, you know, it's a bigger red day, but in the grand scheme of things of where, especially where I've been in the last month, it's it's not a big deal. So, um, so basically what I have to do is just kind of, you know, just remember, look, you're only giving back what you made yesterday. Yes, the numbers are bigger, but you've been trading bigger size. So, you know, you've got to be able to handle the bigger losses that come with trading bigger size. That's just the way it is. So coming back on Monday morning, you know, how do I approach things? Well, you know, is today uh, just sort of the exception that it was a slow day and, you know, that, drop on COCH was maybe because of the offering, you know, or the shelf registration that they've got. I don't know. You know, I'm not really sure. Ultimately, I don't know. I can speculate, but I don't know. Um, PRSO, that one dropped as well. So how are traders going to feel on Monday? 
I'm going to be a little cautious, right? Shorts might be a little more confident. So maybe we do have to be a little careful on Monday and see, you know, what's, what's the, what's the trend? I mean, if we have 10 more moves like this, then clearly traders are going to stop buying any of these breakouts, right? And anything that pops up, shorts are going to hit a lot harder. And what will end up happening, if that happens, is we'll end up going into a colder cycle where everything that pops gets reversed. Until you have one that pops, shorts try to hammer it back down, but the buyers are there because the underlying news is really so strong that this is going to go higher. And then shorts get squeezed out and you get that massive second push and then that pull back. And then next thing you know, it's, it's, you're getting another stock like drug that goes up you know, 2000% in one day. So, I mean, of course, that's the, the like most extreme sort of version of that. But anyways, um, so anyway, you know, what could, what's going to happen on Monday? Time will tell, of course. Um, but my plan on Monday, for the most part, is to come in um, pretty much, you know, the same as today, looking for stocks with breaking news, because, of course, that does work well. And we'll see what the momentum looks like. We'll see what the volatility looks like. I'll monitor the spreads. And if I think I can manage risk and we've got something that's got breaking news and, you know, it meets the profile, the float, the price, everything else, I'll take some trades and we'll see what I can get. Now, of course, if I have a second red day on Monday, you know, two red days in a row, then that's when I end up putting myself into a trader rehab going into Tuesday, which, you know, I obviously don't want to do. Could I put myself into trader rehab right now? Well, I could, but is it really necessary? Not really. Uh, you know, today is a red day, but Monday could end up being a $50,000 green day like last Monday was. So it's really going to depend on the quality of the news headlines that we get on Monday. And if we have some really nice news headlines, we have some stocks that really meet the profile that has worked so well through October, then, you know, I think Monday will be fine. Uh, we do also have the election, of course, coming up this week. Uh, so that's going to throw a little bit of a wild card out there. It could, at least, um, depending on what happens. So, you know, that's something that we've got to be aware of, some volatility around uh, around the election. Uh, we've had some momentum coming into the election, but the market was down yesterday um, quite a bit. So that might also have hurt momentum a little bit this morning. And it is, you know, look, it's the day after Halloween. It's the last day. Well, it's last day of sort I mean it's the first day of November but it's also sort of a it's a Friday you know so eh, maybe today just you know is sort of just an off day and and we'll be back in the groove on Monday but I think um the the safer bet um for those that are a little bit more risk averse that don't want to take the risk is going to be to watch for curls and to see what holds up and wait for that really clean first pullback right so you know like this is a move where you didn't really get a super clean first pullback. You got to move from 10 to 24 and, you know, then kind of it gave you some more moves. But the real clean move was that first one. And sometimes that happens. And if you're going to miss the first move waiting for that first curl, then you might miss it. But waiting for this pattern either on the one minute or the five minute is fine. But, you know, let that first pop happen. See how much it pulls back and then look for the curl. Uh, like I said, the only downside is that in that first pop, when something goes from 750 to 17, that's $10 a share. There's a lot of opportunity in that first pop. So the only time that I'm willing to sacrifice that is when I'm really not feeling confident. And if the volume is really light and I'm just like, nah, I don't know if this I can trust this. And in fact, you know, the one from yesterday, I fumbled as well. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, anyways, um, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at right now. So going into the weekend, definitely on a red day. But as far as red days go, emotionally, not feeling, not really feeling super activated, just kind of like, eh, that's a bummer. But that's about it. You know, it's, it's I'm not that frustrated. I didn't take too many trades today. I didn't really like I wasn't fighting and fighting and fighting and then finally had to give up. I just, you know, I accepted defeat pretty quickly and you know, that's it. So look, you know, this is, this is trading easy, come easy, go. And, um, I'm going to be definitely curious to see how next week plays out. If I start to go into, you know, multiple red days in a row, that's where all of a sudden I'm like, okay, got to stop the bleeding, pull money out of my account, you know, take the profit off the table from October, really protect those gains. Cause I've seen some traders do a course is, you know, they'll start to lose and then they just, 
it starts to really unwind. And then in a month, you know, or in, even in a couple of weeks, they could give back months and months of progress. And I've done that before. So I, I know the steps I need to take uh, to avoid that if I start seeing that happen. But it's also important to be able to just get right back on the horse. If you get knocked down, you have a red day, you know, just get right back on the horse because you spend all this time overthinking it, putting yourself in a trade of rehab and getting really bent out of shape over one red day. Eh, it's kind of silly. It doesn't really make sense. The strategy's not broken. You just had a red day. So don't need to read into it too much more than that. Um, and there's times where I've had a red day and then, you know, the next day is just another $25,000 green day or whatever it is in a hot market. And it's like, yeah, that red day is gone. It's water under the bridge immediately. So I don't know for sure. Uh, having a red day on a Friday, you know, kind of, I'm not able to bounce back from it immediately, you know, tomorrow. So I kind of got to sit with it. And then Mondays can be slow as it is because traders kind of, you don't have a lot of FOMO that carries, excuse me, from Friday into Monday. So kind of resetting for a whole new week. So probably the, the safest bet for me would be coming in on Monday. Um, you know, just to be just to be a little cautious, try to build that cushion. And then if I get the cushion pretty quickly and pretty easily, then I'll be like, okay, time to size up and be aggressive. But if I can't get that cushion, um, you know, easily, then just stay with small size on Monday. So that's probably the safest bet just to size down a little bit Monday, try to build the cushion beginning of the week before I do anything too crazy. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you guys as always for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this recap. I know it's a red day, but I hope it's helpful. And I'll remind you as always, trading is risky. My results aren't typical, so manage your risk, take it slow. And I'll see you guys back here bright and early on Monday morning.